The reason that wild blueberries are called wild is not have anything to do with their management, actually. It's because they bounce around on the conveyor belts in the most beautiful fashion, and they, are, they act wild. Burning was a practice that, that was uh, used to prune the blueberries. Uh, the wild blueberry has about two-thirds of its biomass underneath the ground. So when we prune the plant, we're really taking that top third off. And we do this to invigorate the plant, to uh, produce new stems that are more productive. Because they're round, they're perfect fruits. They have this protective skin, but because they're round, they can do things that other fruits can't do. It's true. The kind of simple story is how long were people here and what items did they leave behind? To me, it shows that my ancestry has been here longer than I previously thought it could have been in Maine. So being here, I feel pretty honored. Since so much of the coast erodes, most of this site is, is uh, relatively late, but within the last 2,000 years. This is very different than going out and, and collecting artifacts um, that are meaningful perhaps just because they're old, but here they really are telling a, a, a more elaborate story. This evening we'll be going out with a biologist from the USGS um, at the northern division of the Mooseford National Wildlife Refuge up in Bering, and we'll be misnetting American woodcock. We also went, we went timber doodling, which is just trying to sneak up on the woodcocks right before they go up and do their little mating dance. American woodcock, ready everyone? And as the bees squeeze through the holes in the screen, it knocks off some of the pollen loads that are on their back legs. What we have here is the collector of the pollen trap. And then we can do chemical analyses on this pollen to look at potential contamination with pesticides. Each colony really has its own foraging personality. I'm actually a pretty huge fan of algae. I find it pretty darn fascinating. The Semester by the Sea program is designed to bring students you know, down to essentially nature's classroom. You want to get them out of the classroom and bring them down to the, the shorefront. And then you start dreaming about them. <laughs> That's when you know you've gone crazy, when you start dreaming that one person is saying, oh look, it's asking for the docent. What the biologists were calling otter sign wasn't always otter sign. Sometimes it was a raccoon, sometimes it was a mink. They needed to brush up on their tracking skills. Regardless of whether or not we catch this animal, I'd like to move like we could. And once you start understanding the mechanics, you can kind of like become the animal and sort of see it, the world through its eyes, at least perceptually a little bit. Picture the whole body in the air, the whole body in the air like so. The front feet land, the rear feet are still in the air. 